Ready to try this again? Yes. <laughs> All right. So ready. <laughs> so uh, Manuela Shar. Yes. Did I say it right? Yeah, that's good. Good. You have the, the omelet over the A. Yeah, but I already got used to the Shar. So okay. it's usually Scher, mis means scissors in German. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah. Everyone calls me Char in English. Right. <laughs> well, I call you Manuela. The staff call you Manny. <laughs> yeah. It's easier for them to say. <laughs> and can you tell us, you're about, you volunteered with us for today's your last day. Mm -hmm. You've been here a week. And you're from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And you're a professional athlete. Yes. So can you tell me about that and how that started? Yeah, so I always was a really active kid. I love to do sports. I love to run away with, you know, the other kids. And I was always really fast in running. So um, with nine years old, I got injured. Um, I had a playground accident. Um, it was a birthday party f of a school friend. And they had this, um, like, huge, pretty massive swing in the garden. And it wasn't quite well. Uh, built in the ground so it fell fell down and it broke my back so since then I I'm using a wheelchair um, um, but yeah I, I always wanted to go back into sports and um, I was lucky to meet the right people um, at uh, the Reha Center that I went to uh, the Schweizer Public Zentrum um, which is also like our training base we have uh, great uh, sports facilities uh, we have those uh, the 400 meter track we have indoor training so um, I met these people um, of wheelchair racer and then they introduced me to wheelchair racing and it was clear to, to me to um, yeah but that's what you were gonna do yeah exactly and I, I don't want to you started when you were 11 racing yeah and I don't want to give you away your age, but you've been racing for a while now, right? Yeah, I'm 39 now. <laughs> <laughs> so. And do you still train at the same facility? Yeah, exactly. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, it's great um, because it's a place where you meet, you know, newly injured people who got, yeah, uh, and those athletes. And um, yeah, it's great to see people who, who have been in a wheelchair for many years and to see how how happy they are, how, how they manage their lives, how they're active, how they, you know, travel, how they work, how they have families, just, you know, like regular lives. Yeah. So that was really good to see for me. Just adapt and overcome. Exactly. You know, and, and I, you love dogs. I know, I know you have a dog. You have a cool tattoo of your dog, a Boston Terrier. Yeah. And, and tell me about your dog. Yeah, so I always loved like animals in general, uh, especially dogs. Um, so I grew up with a dog, um, which is a little funny because I always wanted to have a dog. My parents, they never really had, you know, that connection with, with, with dogs. They didn't have one when they were children. So when I got injured <laughs> after my accident, I think they just wanted me to be happier <laughs> again. So we got um, our first dog and we had him for like 16 years. Um, and then of course, you know, um, when I was young and living on my own, I, I didn't have time for a dog. And then um, I was in wheelchair racing for quite a few, like quite, quite, uh, quite some years. And suddenly I realized it's all about performance and all about being strong and faster and, you know, getting better. So I needed something for my heart, for my softer side. Um, that's when I decided to get um, my dog Louis. Yeah, and he did a great job. Yeah, it was, it was the best decision I ever had, I, I ever made. Yeah, I, I had dogs growing up, but and I was forty, I think forty-five when I got my first dog of my own, and yeah. best decision I ever made to yeah, totally. actually change the course of my life. Yeah, it really did, and I, I want to go back because I forgot to ask you. We talked about it before, so. In the Paralympics, you do many events, but you do marathons, right? Mm -hmm. And you said you do the big six, which is, can you, I know New York, London, Berlin. So um, the elite runners, they have this uh, Abbott World Marathon major series. Um, it's, um, it includes all the six major marathons. It's Tokyo, Boston, London, and okay. then Berlin, Chicago, New York. Okay. And since a few years, w the wheelchair racing decision, uh, division is included in that series so it's really amazing for us um, we yeah we stay at the same hotels we use the same court like 
we race on the same course. Um, yeah, it's really amazing, and it's a great, great, great example of inclusion. Yeah, and you run them. You've so you've run them all, and you guys run it every year. We run all six usually, and then there are like a few more, like uh, only wheelchair marathons. Um, but we usually do all six, yeah, and then um, we do it every year. Yeah. Uh, how many years in a row did you run all six? Um, I started doing marathons in 2013. Um, there was COVID, so we didn't race in 2020. Um, yeah, but mostly since then, 10 years. That's wild. I, I ran, I th I've run two marathons and some half marathons, and it's just like the whole training it's it's such a big commitment so i'm always impressed when anybody can get from point a to point b that well, far to, to run. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you, you know it just blows my mind so many people have never done that before you know i'm always impressed with endurance athletes Very when awesome. i started doing marathons it it felt like i'm starting a new career because it's so much bigger than our track racing uh, yeah, because it runs under the this major marathons organization, so um, it's been a great experience, and it's um, great for us because we can actually make a living uh, out of racing. We can be professional athletes, and yeah. it was about time. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, w and then now you're here, and you've been hanging out with the wheelchair mafia and volunteering at TMTRD. How did you find out about us? So I've been following a lot of um, animal rescue organizations on social media and then it suddenly popped up. Like <laughs> I saw this video of the wheelchair mafia gang and um, I always wanted to go see how it looks like to be on site. Um, I've been, you know, donating money for uh, quite a few years now to different organizations, but I always wanted to see and to feel like how yeah. it works mm -hmm. and I contacted different organizations in Spain and Greece uh, if I could come visit and volunteer but it was really difficult with the chair so I saw this video of the wheelchair mafia and then I thought well if they can get around I could probably do too so I contacted you and you were really like open to it and said like yeah let's try it come yeah, and yeah. visit <laughs> so yeah. yeah it's been one of the best experiences of my life, actually. It's, it's, it's been a first for us. And mm -hmm. it's just so, it's so great to see you here and helping out. And I know you, I mean, you did more than that. You've also been feeding the street dogs mm. with Nam. Tell uh, me about Nam. She's amazing. I mean, she, she took me on her feeding round um, in the morning. And the first time I, well, I expected me to just sit in the car and watch her would have been amazing too but then she she like took out my wheelchair and she made sure I could feed the dogs and she was just amazing I loved it especially I, I mean like all the all the stuff is really amazing what they do is uh, it's so impressive to see and yeah the dogs especially the wheelchair mafia they're really lucky to be here yeah they're it, we specialize in caring for them sometimes people will see videos and almost like throw shade like they're suspicious, like why do they have so many dogs in wheelchairs? But they don't understand that Thailand has a lot of stray dogs and a lot of traffic. And these dogs get hit by cars and hit by motorbikes and the lucky ones wind up here. Yeah, you know? I mean, same things happen everywhere in the world, but I think a lot of people just don't wanna care for a dog in a wheelchair, yeah. let's be honest. I mean, I've, I had so many people, people I didn't know, uh, coming up to me and telling me, oh, I'm so, so amazing, you're here at this party. Uh, if this would have happened to me, I would have wanted to die. And I think they actually think they like telling me something like supportive, but it actually means your, your life must be miserable and it's not worth living. Yeah, so yeah. they don't get it. It's 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 really uh, yeah. I can only think what they think about a dog in a wheelchair, but yeah, they're happy. They want to do the same thing as my dog at home. They want cuddles. They want to run. They want to you know play. Yeah, and a lot of times there's no learning curve. Like you put them in the chair, and they just go. And then sometimes 
like you were talking about at the facility that you train at when new people come and they're new to being in a wheelchair and new to having this life-changing event and then they get to see others and see what's possible. I swear that happens with some of the dogs too because most of them just go right away but some of them need some support. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and I swear that, that you see it in the dogs. Yeah, I, giving I, it I to totally each other. agree. Yeah. And a loaded question. I'm not going to ask you your favorite dog, but tell me about some of the dogs here that you, that you like. Uh, the longer my stay, the longer the list, I would say. Um, well, Scooter is a special dog. He is one of the wheelchair mafia, and he was one of the first that came up to me and was just, you know, wanted to be cuddled. And <laughs> he has this really, really beautiful, uh, friendly face. Uh, he's a really special one and then yes. there are a few like younger dogs at the quarantine station that I really really fell in love with um, Yeah, I don't know how many hours I spend in there just sitting there watching <laughs> Yeah, it's also really interesting to actually just watch them being like in the, in, in their groups how they communicate mm -hmm. because I did this, you know online class during COVID about how dogs communicate and it was I, I always felt it, it was really uh, interesting and it's really great to be here and to see them um, living in like a pack and then how they communicate with each other yeah. Um, so yeah it's gonna be tough tomorrow to say goodbye to some of the dogs yeah you know? well I think that being said I don't want to take up any of any more of your time in here I want you to go get some quality dog time <laughs> in the shelter wherever you want uh, and also we would love it if you would represent TMTRD in the wheelchair mafia maybe in a race we'll get the the logo oh definitely and yeah you can put it on that. your shirt that yeah, would be would amazing and you are a member of the wheelchair mafia you're the first human member <laughs> and uh, the I, best team I could, I could imagine <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. So thank you so much for thank volunteering. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. And I, I think that we'll, uh, we'll see you again. Uh, I still hope so, yeah. You know? Yeah. We'll make it happen. All right, thanks. <laughs>